Janice and Letterman, our peck, our beloved peck, which has stood tall across literally two decades of global war fighting after dark, is finally being axed. God, we're getting old. But it's finally being put to bed. But what are we replacing it with? Well, boys, we got our hands on two of them right here. So let's talk about that. Now, quick update with the channel here. Kings, we are 20,000 subscribers away from 1 million. In just about two and a half years, you guys, you're the best. You are the absolute best for your, your just continued support, subscribing, liking, sharing, and dropping a comment for the YouTube algorithm gods. We also got to thank the boys over at AIM Surplus for being the goats of the 2A industry and supporting the homies. Literally anything and everything for your 2A needs top tier customer service, a nationwide online presence, and just down to earth, humble, and super knowledgeable dudes that just know what they're talking about. And also the homies over at Badlands Munitions, it's the only ammo I trust to shoot around this ugly mug. Now, if you wanna learn more, check out my Instagram. It is at 110sasactual. So yes, that is correct. The PEC 16, it is out. The PEC 15 is on the chopping block as we speak. The United States Marine Corps just dropped 249 million dollars. Yes, a quarter of a billion dollars, quarter of a billion dollars on this all new LEM laser aiming module. This is the Envision Rail, rail mounted aiming illumination laser. God, the military just loves their acronyms. After years in the making, along with dozens of trials and tests being subjected to probably some of the harshest and well, to be quite frank, totally unrealistically brutal tests, this is officially replacing the PEC at the United States Marine Corps, but not just the Marines. There are other people interested in this right now, including the Army. So they're testing this thing as well. But here's the real question. What makes this thing actually better than the tired and true PEC? We've all either seen on guns during the global war on terror, used on guns in the global war on terror, or even owned as a civilian. Well, shockingly, this tech, it is available to us lowly civilians for the first time ever by TNVC. So that's kind of rad. That's super rad. Goated, not gonna lie. Like, first of all, it's not often that big military contractors, one, even think about us lowly civilians, let alone think about us boring and lame lowly civilians enough to offer us the product that the military is using. So that's awesome. Hell yeah, we don't see that very often. So. I got this at TNVC. We worked directly with Envision here to get this exact example that they are using. So, mad shout out to TNVC and Envision here. Again, it's not often does literal cutting edge technology get offered to us. Shoot, we barely even get the scraps. So, super rad, mad cool of both of these guys. Now, let's talk about what exactly this new laser is. Who is this Envision company that actually likes US civilians? Who did Envision beat in these trials and tests? So let's talk about that. Now, Envision, definitely a new kind of kid on the block when it comes to war fighting technology. So in 2019, on I would say the sharp downslope of all that combat we've seen over in the Middle East, kind of a bull to just do a war fighting tech company startup when the United States was basically turning off the faucet on all of that money and getting out of the way of this perpetual war in Afghanistan and Iraq. But it looks like it doesn't really matter because only a few years later, they dropped this thing that absolutely crushes the end goal and has beat out the B.E. Myers dagger for this new United States Marines contract. The rail itself, it's just like every other PEC laser, except, well, way better. Better and, well, basically, every single category and aspect that you can measure. Let's talk about durability first. So, MIL standard 810-H testing protocol. This is what you would call the gold standard, or for lack of better wisdom, is your product marine proof? Is your product going to handle some of the most rigorous and sometimes even unrealistic brutality testing? Things like freezing temps and superheated up to over 120 degrees? Can it be immersed in salt water during an amphibious assault and not corrode into dust? Can it withstand literal radiation to fungus growth resistance? That's what they're testing these things for, not kidding. They test for fungus growing inside of your laser. Not only did it pass, but it passed the marine standards as well. I heard they were even testing for a crayon stability kind of thing in the battery compartment. Please don't quote me on that. Sorry, Marines, if I offended you. Love you guys to death. So it's stupid durable, and now it is proven. How's the performance? Well, let's talk about output first. This thing is a literal 
lightsaber. Like, I have an Ingol, I have a Peck 2, I have a Peck 15, I have a Peck 16. I even have one of these Chinese Somo gear things. Its output is absolutely absurd compared to these things. Like, I cannot stress it enough. I genuinely don't understand how they packed this much output into this tiny little thing here, but they did. Speaking of size, it is probably one of the smallest lasers on the market right now. Very similar in size to the Ingol, which is great because I absolutely hate taking up valuable rail space because, well, first of all, I'm 6'3", I have goofy long arms, and I can absolutely tell the difference between missing one little pick rail slot when I'm running my rifle. Now, compared to the Peck, I've gained a few more slots, which I can immediately tell the difference in. It's not so much a problem. I would say I'm like 16 to 18 inch guns, but when we start talking about these really short guns, especially what the military is moving towards, 11.5, 10.3, it makes a huge difference. I hate feeling all cramped up on the gun and I'm sacrificing comfort for just overall comfort on the gun. And this gives me a touch more space. It's just a great quality of life improvement, which leads me to the next huge improvement of quality of life. The little heads up screen right here, probably one of my favorite parts. Now, I don't know if you guys are doing a lot of nighttime ops, but even if you're not, well, it's very easy to not see what you're doing with your laser when it's dark out. But now you can, but it goes so much more deeper than that. You now have some customization available to you, the end user. You can set up the laser and loom to your own power default settings. You can set the sensor on the unit display to day, night, or even auto, so it reads the room. Literally, it reads the room and adjusts the brightness on your screen so it doesn't wash out your nods while you're using this thing. You can turn the display off if you want to do that as well, but it's really a non-issue for me when I run it on auto. You can read the battery life, set the sleep settings, just a ton of quality of life settings and upgrades that haven't really been available like this prior to the rail. Now, if you're kind of a simpleton like me, you kind of don't want to mess with a gorillion different settings and features, and that's absolutely available. Just like you set your pet that you're already familiar with, you just rotate the dial and press the fire button. The dial settings are super simple and straightforward here. And with the buttons here at the top, you can quickly change the brightness to the, your environment so you don't, again, wash out your knots. On the side here, you can adjust the actual throw of illumination to dial in to, say, either a flood or a super hyper-focused laser beam of loom. And then probably one of the nicest quality of life settings is CQB mode. Basically, this is just great because in the heat of the moment, if you forgot to change your settings or you didn't turn your laser on, whatever, you can just throw this lever right here all the way over without any guesswork. It comes to abrupt stop. You can't turn it anymore. And it's the perfect setting for indoor CQB work. The loom is at like the perfect setting. So like this is the default. It doesn't wash out your nods. It doesn't wash out your teammates' nods. And it's crazy how important that is if you don't think about like small stuff like that. It's just really well thought out. Now, tech-wise, super rad. There's so much customization and just well thought out and intuitive kind of design here. Now, one cool thing I do want to talk about is the battery cap. God, it is so much easier to replace a dang battery and get the dang battery cap back on. Now, my other pecs, my ingles, good lord have mercy, those super fine and just short threads, I swear, I can spend five to ten minutes in the dark with trying to get a battery into this thing and put this cap back on. It's pitch dark, I can't see what I'm doing, so it's kind of just like guessing a hundred times wrong and then having to back it up, back off, and trying to put it back on, and then be in danger of straight up just cross-threading the booger on there. The Rails battery cap is so simple, the threads are easy, they're short, put it on there, you can't miss it. Plus, it's mounted off to the side there too, so it's way easier to get that cap and the battery back on there nice and flush, because you have way more space to work with. Now, the lens cap cover is definitely, uh, it's different than most. At first, I didn't really like it, and now I kind of get it now that I've played with it, and it makes a lot more sense. Many times, I went to go use my laser and be like, dang, my battery's dead again, I left it on or something, but turns out the caps are just still on, so you gotta go pop those two covers off. This is simply one big cover that's super easy to pop off and stores nicely over here on the side of the body. There's this little rib that extrudes from there. You just pop it off and it kind of snaps right into place right there. Now, the tape switch that you can use for these things is definitely new to me. I'm used to that crane plug that kind of looks like just like an audio jack. This is like an exposed jack here on the side. It mounts nice and flush on the left side of the body here. It's kind of weird to get used to. It doesn't pop on and off necessarily. You kind of have to come in at a little bit of an angle and like 
clip it and snap it into place. It's not really a con at all. And actually, in fact, I think it's a little bit more secure because you won't ruin your cord or break the jack off in the connection with this. It's simply like a tear away kind of thing. Again, just tiny little quality of life updates. Now, you gotta ask the most important part. Does it look cool? Well, yeah, it looks really cool. It looks super rad. Here's the biggest thing. Like, it doesn't look cheap. And there's two different ways to think about that. Like, it can look cheap because it's just a terribly laid out system. The buttons are all in strange places. Or it literally looks like a cheap piece of crap Somo gear molded gumball plastic. This thing is super solid. It's built really well and it's sealed up extremely well. It looks just very well thought out and very professional, not like a space gun thing. So... Overall, between the absurd output, numerous quality of life updates, and just the small profile, I think the Envision Rail from TNBC here is just absolutely dope for us civilians. And let's be honest, the fact that you can actually get the latest and greatest military tech is awesome. That's super rad. It really isn't often a company comes out strong for us civilians, but glad they did. So, JD's and Lenneman, we have a wrap here. And as always, run your gun and not your mouth. We'll catch you next time.